Good morning, and I'm so glad that you are here today. Thank you so much for joining me. I have some news for you today about a slight change that's going to take place on Fridays. As many of you know, this devotional series, this daily devotional series, is, an, is accompanying right now a, a Bible study that I'm teaching on the Psalms. And that Psalms Bible study starts today. So if you're interested, I'm going to put the link up here so that you can get the workbook if you'd like and join along. There are 25 weeks of study in the Psalms with video teachings that are delivered to your email account every Friday. So beginning this Friday, I will not be here with you in the morning. So Mornings with Marianne will not be on Friday for a season. Instead, you will receive teaching from me via your inbox if you are part of the Psalm study on Friday afternoon. Um, this week, in fact, I'll be talking about Psalms 1 and 2 that were written by David. And so um, I, if you don't want to participate in the study, but you still would like to uh, be part of the teaching of the Psalms, you're also welcome to subscribe to the River YouTube channel. It's a new channel that I just started, and all of the, the weekly teaching for the Psalm studies will be coming out on Fridays on the YouTube channel. So I'll put the link to that channel in the comments section because it's super hard to find if you're just searching for it. But anyway, these two formats are designed to be paired together. So in our time here each morning, we are walking through the life of David. We're trying to better understand the circumstances of his life that are then going to give us greater understanding to his heart cries before God in the Psalms and in, in the prayers and the poetry and the lyrics and the laments and the wisdom and all of the Psalms that he wrote that really tap into what he experienced in his life and in his faith relationship with God. Um, so also, if you are part of the Psalm study and you're just now joining me for the daily devotional series, you might want to go back a couple of weeks. We started a couple of weeks ago and learn a little bit more about Saul because Saul is a very prominent person in David's life and he is responsible for a great source of pain and angst uh, that David experiences as we go forward in this series. So anyway, today grab your Bibles because we are looking at the story of the famous battle between David and Goliath. And uh, we're in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Today we're going to talk about verses 28 through 39. Hopefully you got a chance to read those yesterday. If not, feel free to pause and you can read those verses right now, but we're going to talk about that. Let me ask you first, um, have you ever stepped out in faith to trust God and then experienced great hardship? Have you ever had that happen? Because the reality is that often a response of faith elicits a counter response of opposition. You know, when we take a step of faith, it's not uncommon for somebody to try to discourage us. And often it's the people closest to us who are the greatest source of discouragement. You know, for David in the story, we find that it's his, his big brother Eliab, and his big brother Eliab was a source of discouragement for David. He was very quick to express anger and ridicule when he learned that David was inquiring about Saul's offer for a reward to the man who would slay the giant. David's brothers were probably jealous of the special attention that he had received when Samuel anointed him. Remember, we looked at that last week. All the brothers were paraded before Samuel by the father, and yet Samuel said, wait, don't you have one more brother? And then David, the little brother, comes out, and he's the one who gets anointed by Samuel. So the brothers probably had a lot of resentment about that, but of course, they didn't fully understand even what that meant. But the reality is that taking a step of faith often elicits opposition, and we see this all throughout Scripture. You know, back in the book of Genesis, we see that Joseph's brothers hated him and sold him into slavery. We see in, in Exodus, Moses was criticized by both his brother and his sister. We see throughout the Gospels that Jesus' earthly family misunderstood him. Even his brothers didn't believe in him until after his ascension into heaven. But have you ever stepped out in faith to follow the leading of the Lord and then received criticism or attack from the people closest to you? This can happen in families, it can happen in churches, it can happen with friends and at work. It's happened to me on numerous occasions and it is so painful. It never ceases to be so painful. The problem is that when we live our lives by human sight and we calculate all of the risks of our decisions by human perspective, it doesn't always make sense. 
But when God is involved, the whole equation changes. And that's the gift and the blessing of faith. And so oftentimes when we take a step of faith and our friends and family members calculate what we're doing by human perspective, it just doesn't make sense. And we receive criticism for that. But when we see things through a lens of faith and we know that God is involved, everything changes in our perspective. Now, when, we, when David had the courage that he had to go out and meet Goliath in battle, he did not have blind faith. He had reasoned faith. Let's look at verse 36. He says, Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. You see, the Lord had equipped David in previous battles against lions and bears as he was protecting the sheep that he cared for in his, in his family from their predators. And he has skill. He, he knows how to use a slingshot. And he has confidence that the same Lord who had been with him in the past as he was fighting off wild beasts would be with him again. He was actually remembering God's past faithfulness. And remembering God's past, past faithfulness is one way we find the courage to face new and daunting challenges that truly threaten to shake our faith. David remembered what God had done, and he had confidence in what God would do again. And he expressed that in verse 37 when he said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul, King Saul, said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. The point that I want us to contemplate today is that God encourages us in our battles of faith by reminding us of his past faithfulness. God does that. He encourages us in our battles of faith by reminding us of his past faithfulness. The future is often scary and unknown. We've talked about what it's been like recently to live in a fog. We can't see forward and so it seems scary and unknown. But one of the ways we can face the future is with confidence in God's past faithfulness. He promises that he will never leave us or forsake us. And so far, hasn't that been true? I mean, up to this point, we're alive, we've survived, and many of us have even thrived in life. So why would we think that he would abandon us now? God actually commands his people in scripture to remember the past. This was part of his relationship with ancient Israel. They had a whole series of feasts and festivals and sacrifices that were designed for them to remember God's past faithfulness. They were to remember the exodus out of Egypt, the Passover when they were saved. All of these feasts and festivals were designed as patterns of remembrance. And the same is true for us because Jesus told us that we needed to rem remember God's faithfulness every time we took communion. You know, every time we take communion, we remember that Jesus died on a cross for our sins and we celebrate our forgiveness. Jesus commanded us to partake of the Lord's Supper in remembrance of him. And he knew that we would, would be prone to forgetfulness and prone to faithlessness if we didn't practice remembering. So I want to ask you, what frightening situation are you facing today? Will you take some time to look back and remember how God has been faithful every moment of your life thus far? And then will you step out in faith based on his character and his promises and his honor? Not blindly, God's not asking you to blindly step out in faith, but step out in faith based on your confidence in who he is and how faithful he's been in your life thus far. Let me pray for us. Father, we're so grateful for what you're teaching us about the battles of life. We are in the midst of them. We know it. But in the midst of this battle, you're also reminding us of how faithful you've been and how trustworthy you are and how confident we can be in your character. So, Lord, we want to be like David. We want to step into the battles and we want to do it in the confidence of our living God who has been faithful to equip us for every battle we've ever faced so far in life. And we know, Lord, you'll be faithful in the future battles as well. And so we pray that you'd help us today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I hope you have a great day. Um, tomorrow we'll finish up this chapter. So go ahead and read ahead. We're going to look at verses 40 through 58 tomorrow. And I look forward to seeing you then. Have a great day.